You know, we, we talked about listening and after you listen, eventually you've got to talk, right? Eventually you've got to talk. But when you talk, there's a way to do it and a way not to do it. And the folks that are able to bring what they're saying to life are going to be the most successful and the most persuasive. And how do you bring it to life? Through a story. You know, there's a reason that TV and movies are so popular because we all love a good story. What we don't love is to be bored in, in a boardroom uh, listening to data or looking at a PowerPoint presentation. It's just not, it's just not interesting. But so often um, when, when you tell a good story and when you can captivate people um, with your story, that's what's going to allow you to, 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 uh, to be persuasive. And you know, when I think about some of the great leaders, I actually just got out of a meeting that was put together by my friend and and a cl longtime client and uh, someone I consider a mentor, Jim McCann from uh, CEO of uh, 1-800-Flowers.com. And Jim just blew me away in this meeting as a masterful storyteller. And he just was able to bring things to life in a way that otherwise I just wouldn't have been as interesting. Hmm. It's uh, it's the power of the story, I tell you. It's, uh, uh, we find it amazing. We actually, we convey to clients is, um, you know, the story will tell how you had a problem and how you solved that problem. And people are always fascinated by uh, by those sort of st stories and overcoming the problems that you have. And it uh, it helps it helps our clients actually sell their their products. So a absolutely, go ahead. No, I, I was just I was going to go on from that. And it's also it's it's I, I've I've who was it was it um, was it Ben uh, it was a Bosworth that mentioned that uh, the other thing is to you know lower your guard and show vulnerabilities yeah. in your stories. Right? It's not just about telling stories about how you solved all of their problems and blah blah. It's a, you know show that you're an idiot every once in a while. Right? And and Absolutely. it and it Absolutely. and it lowers your guard and 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 invites them in to actually get to know you. Well, stories, a lot of what the book is about is about humanizing, humanizing brands, humanizing yeah. yourself, and stories definitely humanize people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of folks don't realize how many stories they have to tell until they really start thinking about it. Uh, I talked in the book about how we all, no matter, how, no matter what the size of your business, everyone has a story about the founding of your company. And mm -hmm. even if you weren't an entrepreneur, even if you aren't the entrepreneur yourself, even if you're sitting in marketing, um, in a in a, a corporation with ten thousand twenty thousand employees, <clears throat> there's a story about that company and how it first started. It wasn't always this giant corporate behemoth. Yeah. There was a time where there was a couple kids in a garage, or somebody in his dorm room, or one or two people with an idea. And the story of that of how the company came together again, no matter how large it is today, is a story that sort of by definition. Uh, humanizes us, uh, uh, makes you a little bit more humble, right? Because this company might be 20,000 people, but, you know, Facebook was started in a dorm room and HP started in a garage and, you know, Apple was started, you know, in an apartment. So, so the story can, can, can make us all think, wow, I, I understand that I could be like that. I, I, a lot of folks know sort of our story, but, you know, it, can I, can I tell it again? I Please. know I, I think I probably Please told it. Exactly. On, on our last interview, but you know, our, the story of our company is literally a story of, of two people coming together. You know, when my wife and I um, got engaged to be married, you know, we, we could not afford a big wedding in New York, but I wanted uh, desperately to be able to invite everyone I ever knew. You know, I, for me, social media is like a dream come true because I, I, I love connecting with people. So uh, we partnered, I was a diehard baseball fan, so we partnered with the minor league. Um, uh, team of the Mets, the minor league franchise of the Mets in Brooklyn, and we put together a promotion at the end of a wedding, uh, at the end, excuse me, at the end of a ball game where we got married. It was called our Field of Dreams, and we were able to then sell all of our sponsorship, all the sponsorship inventory from the game to our wedding vendors. And so, as it turned out, 1-800-Flowers.com sponsored our flowers, and Smirnoff sponsored our alcohol, and David's Bridal sponsored our bridesmaids' gowns, and uh, Entenmann sponsored our desserts, and so on and so forth. We raised about hundred thousand uh, dollars for an amazing wedding. We had five hundred friends and family and five thousand strangers there. And and after the event, some of our wedding vendors, 100flowers.com and Entiments and some others, said to us, "This was amazing. What are you guys doing next?" And we couldn't get married again, so we started a company instead. And you know, not not only do do we do I tell that story, but now you know our staff tells that story when they go into a meeting, um, and it helps to show. Not only our, our humble roots, but our, uh, our creativity, our ability to think out of the box and, 
and and create you know something something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. And I think that even though that story has nothing to do with social media, and we have a social media firm, um, it's still a story that really resonates with 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 the people you know that we tell it to. Absolutely.